Hey, it's Rishi Agarwal. Today I want to show you a classic case. This is a patient with a history of bilateral breast cancer with lumpectomy and radiation. This chest x-ray was done and it shows a nodule in the right lower lung. In a patient with a history of breast cancer, one obvious concern is metastatic disease and also you could think about primary lung cancer. But luckily, the patient has another chest x-ray from about 15 years ago. And when we pull that up, you could see that this nodule was there at that time. If we look on the lateral view, you could see that the nodule is located anteriorly in the lung, in the region of the right middle lobe. Now the differential changes, and we're thinking of benign lesions like granulomas or hamartomas. Carcinoids can also grow very, very slowly, but even a slow-growing carcinoid I would expect to be bigger in this 15-year time frame. We got a CT and it shows this well-circumscribed, approximately two centimeter nodule in the lung with this central calcification that has a popcorn-like appearance. When we look at the soft tissues, there's macroscopic fat in the lesion. Therefore, we can make the diagnosis on the CT of a hamartoma. A hamartoma is a benign tumor of the lung and histologically it's derived from at least two mesenchymal elements like cartilage, fat, connective tissue, or smooth muscle. And that's combined with entrapped respiratory epithelium. A couple helpful keys to the diagnosis on CT. First is the presence of the popcorn-like calcification, which is very characteristic. And second is the presence of fat. Between those two keys, the presence of fat, I think, is more helpful. Here's a couple tips if you think the lesion is a hamartoma. First, if you don't have thin cuts already, get thin slices through the lesion. This will show the fat better because it'll decrease the effect of volume averaging. The second tip is that when you're measuring the attenuation using a point source, it's important to take a look at the slices above and below your measurement to make sure that you're not averaging in a bit of lung. Calcification is definitely helpful if it's present, but three quarters of patients will not have calcification on CT. Now, sometimes carcinoids can calcify, but usually carcinoids don't have this popcorn-like calcification. Carcinoids will usually show eccentric or stippled calcification. Most patients are completely asymptomatic and hamartomas are usually an incidental finding on imaging and just left alone. But sometimes hamartomas can obstruct a bronchus and the patient can have post-obstructive symptoms from it and if the symptoms are significant enough, these can be surgically resected. Usually pulmonary hamartomas are just isolated single lesions, but sometimes they can be multiple, and if that's the case, you can think of something like Cowden syndrome, which is a disease in which the patient can get multiple hamartomas throughout the body, and they're at increased risk for some malignant tumors. There's also Carney's triad, which consists of pulmonary chondroma, gist, and extraadrenal paragangliomas. A pulmonary chondroma is a lung lesion that's composed of cartilaginous tissue exclusively. It won't have those other mesenchymal elements that a hamartoma has. I just want to show you this one companion case real quick. Most of the time, pulmonary hamartomas are made up predominantly of cartilaginous tissue, but rarely they can be made up of predominantly lipomatous tissue, as in this case. Okay, to sum up, pulmonary hamartomas are benign neoplasms of lung. On CT, they'll be well-circumscribed nodules, usually about two to four centimeters in size. About a quarter of them will have calcification on CT, and fat can be identified in up to 60% of patients. These are usually completely incidental findings requiring no further follow-up if you can demonstrate those benign characteristics. If you have any questions about this topic or any other thoracic radiology topic, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.